top eight Australian horror movies of the 21st century. While the world keeps talking about the spectacles of Hollywood's horror films, we discovered a region that was silently churning brilliant content in this genre. Yes, we are talking about the proud film nation Australia and its eerie content. It works, you know. In our lookout for a list of spine-chilling Australian films to watch, the first thing that blew our minds was to see productions making spectacular films within limited budgets. Just as surprising was the conviction and the great extent to which artists have performed to bring their characters to life. The films presented below are some of our favourites due to their dramatic, bold, and distinctive approach to the horror genre. From zombies to psycho killers, demonic creatures, and gripping slasher horrors, we have got it all covered. So grab yourself some lemonade and get ready for your early dose of summer chills. But before we dive into our list, please consider subscribing to us. It may be a small click from you, but it goes a long way for us. Let's begin, shall we? Number 1, Lake Mungo, 2008 The Palmers lose their child Alice, a 16-year-old girl, in an unfortunate incident where she drowns in a pool during a family outing. Shortly afterward, the family starts encountering abnormal sightings in the house. Matthew, their teenage son, sets up video cameras all around the house to observe and make sense of the paranormal activity. What starts off as a measure to give the family more closure regarding Alice's death, goes on to unveil a series of troubling secrets about Alice. On inspection, they find videos of their neighbor Brett curiously searching Alice's bedroom. Alice's mother soon finds out that it was for a videotape that had recorded a sexual encounter between Alice, Brett and his wife. They are led to Ray, a psychic who admits that Alice was very disturbed and had spoken to him several months before her death. She was having dreams about drowning and being dead, and was feeling unheard. Soon, Alice's boyfriend comes forward with a video of Alice from a school trip to Lake Mungo. Alice is seen burying something under a tree there. What happens with the Palmers as they discover this buried secret, and the supernatural mysteries involving Alice's death, is what takes the plotline ahead, in a rather thrilling turn of events. Joel Anderson has done a clever job in making Lake Mungo a unique horror film by elevating the realism aspect of it. The film follows a mockumentary style of execution, perfected using actor interviews and docufiction elements. This makes the film more believable and gets the audience involved in its narrative. Although it has brilliant supernatural overtones, Lake Mungo leans towards mystery as a genre thus appealing to a larger section of people. There's just one little trivia that makes this undervalued gem more exciting. Lake Mungo isn't a fictional lake, it exists in Australia. Number 2, Wolf Creek, 2005 The film, set in 1999 in Western Australia, is a story based on three backpackers, Liz, Earl and Ben. They go on a cross-country journey via the Great Northern Highway in an old, dilapidated car and halt at the Wolf Creek National Park midway. Absurd incidents follow where they realize that their car has broken down and their watches have stopped working when out of nowhere. A man called Mick Taylor pops up and offers to help them. He reinsures them with stories of several such nights from the past where he has helped strangers and hitchhikers on their journey. He offers water that knocks all the three of them unconscious in no time. Liz soon discovers that Mick is a problematic guy who has held Christy hostage and is sexually assaulting her. As the two women try to escape this situation and flee to safety, Ben is nailed to a mock crucifix in an old shed, unaware of what is happening to his friends. This scary yet thrilling escape situation on what happened to the three backpackers is what completes this film as a lovely psychological horror. This unapologetic horror is spectacular because of the extreme standards set by the actors in terms of their performances. Although Backpackers Travel Gone Wrong is a plotline we have seen time and again, the interesting development of characters is what makes this film stand out. In the first half, the director almost fools you into believing that it is a dramatic road trip film until the eerie turn of events comes in, completely flipping the mood. With a meta score of 54, the subtlety of this horror intrigues the audience into sitting through the grim, convincing, suspense-filled horror till the very end. 
Number 3, The Barbadook, 2014. Amelia is a single mother staying in Australia with her six-year-old son Samuel. Her late husband was killed in a car accident, and the past keeps troubling her. Sam starts exhibiting unusual behavior and starts talking about a monster that he has to fight someday. He also develops insomnia and starts getting in trouble at school. On one such night, Sam asks Amelia to read him a book called Mr. Barbadook. Soon after, Sam starts believing that the Barbadook is real, which troubles Amelia. The presence of an unnatural entity becomes evident in the house, with doors opening and closing by themselves and strange sounds disturbing them. Several such instances lead Amelia to start believing in the presence of Barbadook, and she tries to get some comfort from the authorities. But she has no evidence of his existence and is left feeling helpless. She starts hallucinating, and her mental state takes a toll. Amelia exhibits erratic and violent behavior, snapping in and out of consciousness. It goes to a point where at an instance, she even kills her own dog and tries to strangle Sam. Amelia's struggle to save her and her son from Mr. Barbadook and herself ends in a dramatic but redeeming climax that one must watch to experience. The Barbadook gained critical acclaim during its release with a Metascore of 86. The film's success lies in its attempts to eliminate cheap thrills and pop-up horror, while exploring the human mind and the mysterious ways it functions. Essie Davis literally runs the film, making it impossible to detach from the story. This, combined with Jennifer Kent's bizarre plotline and brilliant execution, gives us a horror film that's worth the hype. Number 4, Rogue, 2007. The film is based on a crocodile watching trip in Australia's famous Kakadu National Park led by Kate, a wildlife researcher. This river cruise with a group of tourists, including a travel journalist named Pete, comes to an abrupt end when the boat hits a hurdle. Kate steers the boat away to a small island nearby for safety. However, when one of the onboarders goes missing is when they realize they have entered a deadly crocodile's territory. Kate realizes that staying on the island beyond midnight is gonna be dangerous, as high tides could potentially submerge the island. Neil and Colin, two locals, head towards the island to help them out. Only Neil makes it to the island, and Colin falls prey to the killer crocodile. The idea is to tie a rope amidst both the island and get the group to cross the river. However, the beasts soon start attacking the group and kill Neil during his attempt to secure the rope. The rope doesn't hold back for long, and the inhabitants are killed one by one. It all comes down to Pete. Will he be able to save himself and the remaining team amidst the nightfall and the dangerous waters? Well, the only way to know would be to watch Rogue. Rogue, which falls under the genre popularly called the creature feature, was widely acclaimed amongst the commercial audience for its tense moments and thrilling plot points. It most definitely isn't a stereotypical horror with paranormal elements, but it's a suspenseful motif that grabs you by the hook, right pace, and stunning Australian locations, makes the film as exciting as it can get. Although Rogue didn't get as much recognition as Blackwater did, an Australian crocodile film that was released in the same year, it enjoys a cult following to date. Number 5, The Tunnel, 2011. This documentary-style film explores the life of Natasha Warner, a journalist, and her crew, including Peter, Stephen, and Tangles, who go into an underground tunnel to expose a potential government scam. The New South Wales government suddenly decided in 2007 to scrap a plan that involved recycling millions of litres of water that was trapped in a network of discarded underground train tunnels. Natasha also hears reports about missing homeless people who took shelter there and decides to find the story behind it. Once inside the tunnel, the crew starts encountering abnormalities. Tangles, who was recording sound inside, okay. suddenly goes missing. Yo, Tangles! Tangles! As they go searching for him, the crew equipment starts disappearing one by one, and Natasha soon realizes that they are being stalked by something inside the tunnel. Natasha, 
Stephen and Peter soon encounter a humanoid creature that slowly but gruesomely kills a security guard who was trying to help them. What story did Natasha finally get out of the tunnel, if she ever did manage to get out? Through his claustrophobic filmmaking style, director Carlo Ledesma takes us deep inside the tunnels, capturing the fear of darkness and beyond and making us witness it. The minimalist found footage approach further elevates this emotion by making the characters more relatable and the fear more real. One other spectacular thing about the film was how they managed to tease the audience with just glimpses of the creature, thus making its actual reveal worth the excitement. With a low budget, good acting, and spectacular build-up, the tunnel is worth its 94 minutes run time. Number 6, Relic, 2020. Edna, an elderly woman, goes missing when her daughter Kay and granddaughter Sam travel to their family home to search for her. The house is infected by a strange black mold and is filled with sticky notes that Edna must have put up as reminders, as she is a dementia patient. However, Sam and Edna have an unpleasant experience in the house, constantly hearing loud creaking from inside the walls and experiencing nightmares. A search party is put together to make sense of the situation and find Edna, only to end up with no luck. One fine morning, Kay finds Edna making tea in the house, as though nothing had happened to her. The doctor suggests that everything is fine except for a small black wound on her chest. It wasn't before long that Edna started acting weirdly, often sleepwalking in the night and whispering, it's nothing. Kay also notices an external presence. Edna's situation grows worse by the day, and Sam finds a hidden passage to another part of the house. Meanwhile, Edna's wound on her chest starts rotting, and she slowly starts looking disfigured and aggressive. Will Kay and Sam find their way out and save Edna? Only the film can tell us. The success of this film lies in director Natalie Erika James' vision of how she has chosen to portray horror. This claustrophobic, gripping, psychological horror is about how three generations of women in a family are affected by something that is scary to them. And naturally, it has won the hearts of anyone lucky enough to have watched it. The creepy horror all binds together in the last 20 minutes of the film, but the slow intensity of building uneasiness till the climax is what makes the film feel so personal. To take a horrible disease such as Alzheimer's and to bring the fear surrounding it to life using grief and guilt is masterfully done in Relic, thus making it a must-visit for all horror film lovers. Number 7, Cargo, 2017 Cargo begins in a world where a deadly virus has been affecting people, making them rabid within 48 hours. Andy, his wife Kay, and their baby Rosie are traveling down an Australian river, but they run out of supplies. Soon they find an abandoned boat to get supplies from, and unfortunately, Kay gets attacked by an infected human. Since the wound is bad and Kay had a chance of dying sooner, succumbing to blood loss, Andy takes her in an abandoned car to the nearest hospital. But the car meets with an accident, and this gives Kay enough time to become infected, biting Andy. Now it's up to Andy to save his little girl Rosie, or find a person he can safely hand her over to. To make things worse, the land also has a group of Aboriginal tribes that are hunting down human beings that have been inflicted by the virus. The clock is ticking, and Andy only has 48 hours. Unlike the other zombie horror films, Cargo brings an interesting twist of time as a constraint. To give a man his ending, only leaving him on the journey to get there, makes this father's struggle convincing and refreshing. The small-scale production and the conviction of the storytellers also make this indie film quite an emotional watch. Cargo packs itself with brilliant suspense towards the climax, and most definitely is a must-watch for all horror buffs and an essential viewing for a movie lover. Number 8, The Loved Ones, 2009. The Loved Ones is a high school revenge drama transformed into a slasher flick. Brent, a college sweetheart, is going through a rough time after his father's death. Brent blames himself for the car accident and starts abusing himself by using cannabis and through self-mutilation with a razor blade. A few months later, Brent prepares to go to the high school prom with his girlfriend Holly when Lola Stone also asks him out as well. 
Brent politely declines Lola's invitation, which infuriates her. She starts stalking the couple and watching them during their intimate moments without their notice. On the day of the prom, Brent leaves his house and goes to a cliff nearby while waiting for Holly. He is depressed and is stuck by negative thoughts when Lola comes and knocks him out. He regains consciousness and finds himself bound to a chair in Lola's house, which was decorated like a prom hall. Lola is accompanied by her father Eric and a third lobotomized woman. They start torturing Brent in eerie ways by injecting bleach into his vocal cords and pinning his feet to the ground using knives. Lola ends up getting aroused through the process and shares a brief romantic moment with her dad. Brent tries to escape and comes across a trapdoor on the floor that reveals a basement cellar. The secrets underneath the basement cellar and Brent's potential escape is what concludes this eerie slasher horror. In the film, Sean Byrne has redefined torture with the graphic instances initiated by Lola. The undertone of sadism, psychotic behavior, and a little incest just make this film potently exciting at every juncture. Robin McLeavy performs with such great intensity, doing full justice to Lola's character. Although Lola doesn't seem as threatening in the beginning, the extent to which she goes through the course of the film and her demented smile make her character a memorable movie psycho. It works, you know. For a horror film, The Loved Ones gained an immense critical appreciation, but it has not received as much love as it deserves. That was all in this video, do hang around for more awesome movie suggestions from around the globe. Stay safe and have a good one.